Hey, welcome back. So in our quest to learn all about data extraction techniques, um, I want to take a little detour um, and show you a very cool online tool that you can use. Um, and it's it's not actually limited to data extraction. In fact, it wasn't actually meant for that, but it's it, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, and it actually sort of applies to what we're doing now in terms of pulling data off the web and putting it into spreadsheets. So I thought I'd show it to you now. It's it's called ifttt.com and ifttt stands for if this then that. Um, the best way to explain what it is uh, is just to kind of demonstrate it in use. Um, ifttt uh, has a bunch of different channels um, available and uh, some of these um, might look familiar to you. These are all different web services um, and um, you're probably familiar with, here we go, there's Facebook and Facebook pages, this is the RSS feed. ESPN, Craigslist, what else, Instagram, Hootsuite, Twitter, you know, and then there's all these things like weather and YouTube and, and LinkedIn and all sorts of things like that. You're probably wondering what is this all about? Okay, um, IFTTT allows you to create what they call recipes, basically where um, you decide if something happens in one of these channels, then make something happen, something else happen in a different channel. Okay, so it's a little bit like really, really simple programming. Uh, you get to kind of put together these recipes um, that link things together so that when something happens in one channel or in one of these services, then you want something else automatically to happen in a different channel. Um, you can actually browse, there's a bunch of recipes that people have made here. So it's basically, okay, if I share something on Facebook, then I want it to be reshared on Twitter, okay? Um, things like, uh, you know, if it's going to rain tomorrow, send me an email, okay? Stuff like that. Um, and really, you're really only limited uh, by, well, first of all, by the channels that are available here and the 68 channels and they keep adding more all the time, um, as well as your imagination, okay? Anything that you can think of. Um, and the interface is pretty easy to use. Um, I'm What I'm going to do, because this is, you know, we are talking about data extraction, I'm actually going to show you how to link uh, your Google Drive, okay? I'm logged into my Google Drive right now. Um, and again, if you've got a Gmail account, then you automatically have a Google account and you've got access to all this. I want to link my Google Drive so that I can get IFTTT to add information to a spreadsheet for me automatically as something happens. And specifically, the information that I want to have it happen uh, or have logged is whenever I add a new video, uh, a new favorite video, whenever I favorite a video on YouTube, I would like to have that recorded in a spreadsheet for me. Okay, so maybe I am putting together a catalog of videos, like maybe an artist that I'm working with, and I'm just gonna add a whole bunch of their videos to a favorites list, and then it's gonna automatically export or, or add all of the stuff into a spreadsheet for me, which in theory I could I could use, right? I could export that spreadsheet and I can I can do all sorts of neat things with it, or it could just be a cool record. Um, I, this is just one example. Uh, obviously you could have any other events trigger you know, some sort of record in a spreadsheet. But why don't we walk through this because it's fairly straightforward to do. The first thing you need to do, um, you need to have an IFTTT account. Um, it's free to have, so it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna assume that you've already signed up for IFTTT and you've got your own account. Once you've done that, you need to select, you need to activate it. Before you can use a channel, you need to actually activate it. So the two channels I'm going to use is, I want to use Google Drive. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this to activate it. And I can tell it's not activated because it's in black and white. As soon as I click the activate button, it's going to ask me, because I'm logged in right now, it asks me to connect the two. So I'm just giving permission to IFTTT to access my Google Drive. And this is a legitimate site. I, I have no qualms about letting IFTTT um, use this. So I'm going to go ahead and click accept. And as soon as you have activated a particular channel, then you see that you've got all these options here. Um, let's just go back to the channels page and we see, ah, yes, okay. Um, this is now in color. By the way, if you click on this, you can actually see, you can adjust the Google Drive settings and stuff like that. You see some examples of that channel in a recipe, as well as you see what actions are possible. 
with this particular channel, okay? And they, they do a pretty good job, I think, of explaining in plain English what it is, okay? So for example, maybe when something happens, you can set it so that it, you know, IFTTT will create a new Google document for you or something. What we're interested in, because again, this is data management, this is about data extraction and data management. So I'm really interested in this one right here that says add row to spreadsheet. So this action will add a single row to the bottom of the first worksheet of the spreadsheet you specify. And so this this is cool. This means I can start recording things to a spreadsheet. Okay, um, that's the action I'm looking for. Let's go and let's go to this, take a look at the other channels. The other channel I need to activate because remember what I want to do is I want to keep track of all my favorite videos here. Um, the other channel I want to activate is my YouTube channel. I could actually activate Vimeo. There's also a Vimeo channel. There's a whole bunch of other things, but let's just let's just keep things simple and let's activate the YouTube channel. So I'm going to go ahead and click activate on this and again it's asking me to grant access and that's fine you if you change your mind you can go and change these later you can deny access you can deactivate all these things okay so there I've now activated the YouTube channel and again um, you can see here YouTube can be used for a whole bunch of triggers okay and a trigger is basically the if part of the of the recipe that you're going to build so basically here this is what I'm interested in right here this trigger will fire every time you add a video to your favorites playlist on YouTube and there's others. You could you could have some sort of a, a trigger fire every time you upload a new video or any time you add something to your watch later li list. Um, but I'm just going to stick with the favorites thing because that's pretty easy. Okay, so if we take a quick look here at our channels, we see now that we've got a couple more. We've got Google Drive has been activated and YouTube has been activated. Let's go ahead and create a recipe. And so to create a recipe, I'm just going to click the Create button up here. And the first thing I need to do, this is this is the programming interface, by the way. Hey, it's pretty nice. Okay, so they say, they say, okay, if this, then that. So the this part, it's like, what do you want to be the trigger for whatever it is that you want to do? What's the action? And in our case, we want the action to be every single time I click favorite, every single time I add, I make a video to be favorite. So let's click on this. And then we have to choose the channel, and the channel that we're using is YouTube, okay? And see how this is really intuitive, right? It's just going down and saying, okay, what's the trigger? And we already talked about this. We want every time we add a video to our favorites playlist on YouTube. So I'm going to click on that. This is the best programming in the world. Point and click. I love it. Um, and this says no fields complete. Like, ultimately, that's just IFTTT. You know, some of these triggers have, like, specific field fields you need to fill in. In this case, there's nothing else you need to fill in. So you've selected that. You're going to create that trigger by clicking this massive blue button here. Click. I love the interface, by the way. I, I mentioned how much I love the interface. Okay, so now you've got this nice, beautiful uh, visual reminder of if a new favorite video is, you know, a new video is favorited by Robo Bunny Attack, then what do we want to have happen? So I'm going to click on the that part of it. And now what is it that we want to have happen? Well, in my case, man, there's so many things I could do. Wouldn't it be cool? I could tweet. I could do also. Anyways, no, I know I'm getting distracted. Um, SoundCloud is here too. Uh, Google Drive, remember? It's data management. And what we're trying to do, what are we doing? We are going to add a row to a spreadsheet. Okay, we could pick any of these, but I'm going to pick Add Row to Spreadsheet. So I'm going to click on this, and now we have to put in some information. So we need to first of all give our spreadsheet a name, new favorite video. And if if you don't have, don't worry if you don't have. Like I don't actually have the spreadsheet made yet. It's no problem. Ifttt will actually create a new spreadsheet if one with this title doesn't exist. So what the heck? Let's call this um, uh, list of Okay, so my, I'll say my favorite YouTube videos. Okay, drive folder path. Uh, so this is the path that is going to save in on here. I don't currently have any, any, uh, uh, any folders. If I delete this, it says that it's just defaults to IFTTT. So I expect that this is just going to create a, a spreadsheet called my favorite YouTube videos uh, inside a folder called IFTTT, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, ooh, what is this down here? Okay, this is what's going to get added. This is your formatted row. This is what's actually going to get added on that spreadsheet. 
Okay, this is the row. And these are just the fields. These are this is all the information. Um, they pre-fill this, so technically you could just we didn't even need to do anything. We could have just accepted the defaults and click create action. It would have worked. But I'm just trying to walk through the whole process so that you understand all the, the choices that you can make and the control you can have. Um, so what we have here, what are the options? You know what? Why don't I do something crazy and delete that? Okay. And what we can do is this big this big plus sign right here, this allows us to select the ingredient that we want. So let's say the first thing I want is I want the video title. So I'm going to add that ingredient. So whenever I whenever I favorite a video here, it's going to write the title of the video on my spreadsheet. And then, hey, guess what? We want to separate the cells, right? We don't want to put just everything in one in one cell. So I'm going to use this kind of triple pipe thing here to separate the cells. That's just the little the, the syntax that IFTTT recognizes. So now it says, got it. I'm going to write that title in the first cell or in the first cell in the next row. And then do you want to put any other information? Well, yeah, why not? Right? We've got what other choices do we have here? How about the author name? I think that's a great idea. Let's include the author name right there. I like that. Let's I'm just copying and pasting the whole that triple pipe here. Um, what else do we want to add? OK, how about how about the actual video URL? That seems like a good idea. Yeah, so we've got we're going to have a row with the first column is going to be the title. The second column is going to be author name. The third column is going to be the URL where this is located. OK, so that's nice. You'll always have a record of where this video is. You won't have to go digging for it. Um, what else? Should we put the description? Sure, why not? The description is just, you know, just the, the, the written part inside there. So that's kind of cool. Let's go find that video description. Uh, video description, add ingredient. That's cool. I'm not going to bother putting anything else. I don't need the embed code. You know, that's, that's fine. Um, okay, I like this. So, that's just to review. When, if we scroll up here, if I like a if I here we go if I favorite a new video as you robo bunny attack then IFTTT is going to add a row to my spreadsheet called my favorite YouTube videos the spreadsheet is inside the IFTTT folder and the row is going to be first column title second column the author name third column the URL and the fourth column will be the description holy cow let's create that action and last but not least uh, IFTTT asked me to give a name to this recipe, so let's call this um, track all my, my favorite video uh, YouTube videos in Google Drive in a spreadsheet. How about that? In a spreadsheet. All you need to do here is write a description that makes sense, and this will be. This will mean when you need to go back and edit it, it'll be really, you'll be able to tell, you know, what recipe is what and what your recipe is supposed to do. Okay, let's create that recipe. And it creates it. Dun, da, da, da. And then you see, there we go. We've got a recipe right here. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to turn it off, you could click that. If you wanted to delete it, you could do that. If you wanted to share this recipe with other people, you could do that. If you wanted to edit it or see anything like that, you could do that. Cool, eh? Why don't we test this out? Let's see if this is working. So I'm going to go and I'm going to take a look at one of my previous data management videos. OK, and I'm going to, whoa, stop playing, please. I'm going to go ahead and add this video to my favorites. OK, I've added that to my favorite. Um, and it's like, I'm going to reload this. Has it been added? No. OK, and that's because there is a bit of a delay. Do you want to check? To, if we want to make sure that this is working, what we can do is here. I'll just go back and show you what I did here. I click this next to this recipe right here. Just click on that. Then you can go ahead and click the check button here. And that sort of forces it to kind of go and check to see if there's been any, any activity. And you can kind of nudge, nudge IFTTT and say, hey, IFTTT. Do your thing. Um, under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have to do this. It would just do this in the background, and you could check like once a week or whatever. So, OK, and we see here there's some details. It created one minute ago, and it was last triggered less than a minute ago. So we know that this has been triggered. This has actually been triggered. So let's go take a look now. I'm going to go to my, my, my drive. I'm going to go ahead and reload this. And my favorite YouTube videos are right here. Interestingly, it did not create a folder called IFTTT. That is no problem. I can deal with that. Can you? 
I know I certainly can. Let's go take a look at this spreadsheet and holy, there's information in here. Um, why is it so wonky? Well, that's just because this is a lot of information. Let's just double click this. And what I'm doing here is I'm just auto auto resizing this. There we go. That's a little easier to read, isn't it? Okay, that's just some basic formatting. Um, why don't we add, while we're at it, let's add some information here. I'm going to, because all this is going to do now is just automatically add a row. From this point forward, add rows to the bottom of my spreadsheet. So I can add anything I want to the top here. So I'm going to say title, and then I'm going to say author. This is just to make the spreadsheet a little cleaner for myself. This will be Earl, and this is be description. Right, and we did this. We programmed this ourselves. We made these decisions. Let's go ahead and bold that. Um, does it bug you that these are at the bottom? Yeah, it bugs me. Why don't we just select that and let's do a line to the top. There we go. That is purely a personal preference. Okay, look at that. So we see there's my first, hey, let's try this again. Let's try a different video. Um, go to host council and I'm going to pick, do, do, do. Let's, uh, here, Bluehost. Don't, but don't play. Stop. There we go. And add to favorites. Yay, it's been added to my favorites. Let's see if that actually worked. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go ahead and check it again. Force us to, to check. And normally, like I said, normally you wouldn't have to check. I'm just I'm just forcing this because I want to demonstrate this in use. Trigger two times. Looked like it worked. So... Let's go ahead and, oh, look at that. It put it in an IFTT folder. So it did after all, okay. Were you okay with that? I'm okay with that. Here we go. Hey, look at that. Second video is right there. So there we go. And the other author is host council and there's the description for that video. There's an example of IFTTT in action. Um, you may be wondering, well, I don't know that I necessarily need to put together a spreadsheet of my favorite videos. That is besides the point. I was using that as an example. Um, you could do much cooler things with this. You could keep track of all of your, let's see here, all of your check-ins on Foursquare. You could do that. Um, you could, excuse me, <coughs> you could keep track of any time anybody uploads a SoundCloud song with a, you know, um, by a particular artist. Uh, you could keep track of um, any Twitter information. You could keep track of, uh, actually, I don't know if you could use Twitter as a trigger, but you could keep track of, oh, Instagram, any Instagram photos that are tagged with a particular tag, you could keep track of, um, and anything at all. And of course, you don't have to use this to create spreadsheets. Um, you could use this to um, automatically tweet things, or uh, maybe any time you upload something to Instagram, you would simultaneously like to publish that image in uh, on your Facebook page. So maybe you're a band. And what, what I've seen people do, I've seen bands do this, and it's a great idea, is um, use this as a way to, to kind of publish um, items across all their networks so that they just have to publish it once in one place. Maybe what they do is they have a WordPress site, they publish something on WordPress and it automatically gets sent out via Twitter and to their Facebook page and maybe they're simultaneously publishing to Tumblr and whatever and, and it's it's all nice and easy to do that way and it's automatic. Um, so I encourage you to have a look at this and uh, experiment with the different channels and the different recipes that are available and don't be afraid to go take a look at some of the go browse through the other recipes that are here here we go copy photos I'm tagged in on Facebook to my Dropbox account you can pretty much anything you can imagine doing you could probably do so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do here okay um, so that was like I said a little bit of a sidebar to our data, normal data management um, screencast but but you know um, I hope that that was useful to you. I hope that that was helpful and interesting. Um, thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you next time.